Restart Austrian Tourism, the return of travel, leisure and opportunities. Das ist das Motto bei den österreichischen Tourismustagen. So this was the slogan of the Austrian Tourism Days. So today, tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, we will talk about traveling, traveling, which is possible again. And on Wednesday, uh, most of uh, all businesses are opened again. And we want to see now how safe is traveling, because this is very important for touristic businesses and for our guests. And this is a subject uh, which was discussed in Austria. And uh, so. And it is, of course, important for tourism, but it is also inter important for national and international guests to have safety, to show what are the concepts, what are the measures for our journey to the future. And this is with hashtag Austria cares, and this is now also our subject for our next program. We will talk with representative of branches, and we will talk. What do guests expect now and in the future? How can Austria be a responsible host? How can we fulfill the expectations? And how is a safety, uh, a safe summer holiday in Austria? And we will talk about this in a branch task. Well, this my uh, colleague and uh, director Claudia Riebler of uh, the Austrian tourism uh, offices will talk about uh, safe traveling, but we will start with a film. So thanks, Ina. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, for our safety panel, Austria Care. On the 19th of May, in two days, Austrian gastronomy business can open its doors again after a six months break. And summer holidays in Austria will have different conditions than we are used to, but we saw this already, what is now demanded and required. And our guests are sitting on their packed suitcases and they want to spend their holidays and we hope also in Austria. Well, the requirements of our guests were changed and will change and what, how does a tourism country like Austria prepare for the coming months and how do we prepare and what are our priorities. We will discuss this during the next hour and I can welcome very interesting guests. Sophie Karmasin, she is working in an opinion poll office also in the tourism and she will give us a very topical results of a survey about the requirements of uh, travelers. Markus Burscher, he is working in the Ministry for Tourism. He is responsible for guest structure. He developed a very unique test program for the employees of hotels and restaurants. Hubert Ziller, uh, he is uh, the head of the department for tourism at the management center in Innsbruck. He is also, of course, analyzing the offer. 
side and also the guest side. Stefan Herring Habenberg, he is the head of the zoo in Schönbrunn. Of course, we, they have a lot of visitors in normal years. They have 3.5 million guests in normal years, and he's also part of the top sites of uh, Austria with more than 22 million visitors. Hello, Zell am See, Norbert Karlsberg. He is the CEO of the Gletscherbahn in Kaprun, and he is the first glacier uh, cable car uh, organization. This is a touristic, of course, leading uh, business, and well, be skiing on the glacier being at the height of 2,000 meters is very interesting. Karin Seiler, hello to Innsbruck. She is the managing director of the Tourism Association in Innsbruck, and she is responsible of one of the most required touristic destinations all over the world. So thank you that you accepted our invitation. We will start this discussion. And I would like to ask all participants to, uh, of course, you can give us your questions via chat. And of course, we will try to answer your questions. Sophie Karmasin, we have mentioned already, you did a very topical survey. Uh, c considering the requirements of people uh, based on COVID. What uh, is your result? Is everything different? What do people want? Not everything has changed, but a lot of things have changed compared to the pre-COVID time. We see a certain shift of values, not only for, our, for the whole life, but all, especially for tourism. Well, there is, of course, a desire to travel, to have holidays. This is stronger this year than last year, and Austria is playing an important role. The Austrians want to make holidays also in Austria. So many Austrians want to spend their holidays in Austria. So we have a lot of Austrian tourists, but there is also some other interesting items, other offers are expected, other subjects are expected. Well, for example, people expect now sustainability, deceleration, and we made this survey already last year, and there was the tendency, okay, this is only once a life because of COVID, no, but it is still uh, uh, sustainability uh, deceleration is still an important subject. The second subject is regionalism, traditional uh, events. This is what people really want more than last year, this feeling your roots and see this in the touristic program. And the third is digitization. This has also increased compared to last year, and you feel this also in tourism because the top three decision criteria for an accommodation is also good and easy online booking and cancellation. So this is very important for people now. Digitization is now something normal for us. Tourism could not exist without digitization. And But we, we talk about easy booking systems. One aspect which is quite interesting is this desire. So people do not want to, be, to have a distance between them so much again. They want to be together. So as far as values are concerned, we see real shifts. Well, uh, this cannot be seen in so-called normal years, but there is the desire now to be free, to be in the nature, and to be together, community. So this is what we want in a Austrian a holiday, being together, being in nature, having sport together. But compared to last year, last year we had, we wanted a certain distance, a certain control. Now this is reduced again because now we want to be 
closer together and this means going back to normal life. This is, of course, important for tourism to be together. Hubert Silla, also the MCE uh, Innsbruck, is uh, discussing tendencies and changes. Can you emphasize this, or what are your results? Well, I can emphasize this. I can underline this. is the same picture we also have, but we have to be careful because especially in a crisis situation, short-time consequences are sometimes overestimated. But still, sustainability is, will stay an important subject. And this is also fit for a bigger picture, because the future guest, we all, we want to have responsible tourism, where we protect our planet, where we also protect human people, but we, where we still have economic conditions. So, and Austria is very well prepared for this. Well, this, uh, we, uh, we also had this sustainable traveling index. We are on place number three after Finland, Finland uh, and Sweden. So this real thing, the product is very popular. Well, and besides Vienna, the product is quite homogeneous. We have a lot of nature. We have mountains. We have hills. But uh, this is really what is shown in this survey. Is this concerning all age groups, this wish for sustainability, or do the youngers want it more? It's a kind of movement. I think it helped that young people more or less played an important role. There's always a certain inertia which is against any changes. But a pandemia, pandemic is more or less supporting changes. And But I think uh, young people are now sensitive. Uh, they are sensitive in their communication. If they will really continue continue to live like that. That's not yet sure. But now it is a certain movement. And it's not luxury anymore to be sustainable. It's something natural to be sustainable. Markus Burscher, sustainability uh, will remain. This is a certain tendency. But during the next weeks, we will also discuss safety and security. And these are guests who ask our offices about these subjects. What about, what about, <clears throat> how do you consider safety in the Ministry of Tourism? What about the testing program? Can you tell us about this testing program? Maybe a few sentences before. We have now a different starting position for, because last summer we managed quite well, especially in the summer season, and the second, uh, the framework conditions for the coming season are different. People have learned to live with uh, protection measures. And what has been mentioned a lot is the vaccination and uh, containing the pandemic. And of course, we are also well prepared. We developed a concept last year where Tourism employees were able to get tested with a PCR test on a regular basis in a very comfortable situation. So the testers uh, went uh, to the businesses and tested everybody there. And now there are much more, many more uh, testing opportunities. There are also those living room tests which we are in the process of delivering to the businesses, which can be used by every, everybody so that they are able to go the last mile at their own business. And we are first in Austria, we test more, even in absolute numbers, than the Germans. And together with countries, communities, and private initiatives, we created a 
test, we tested, uh, we created test uh, opportunities, which are a great uh, prerequisite also for the green passport. So a guest arrives here in Austria and there are different test concepts at his disposal, for example, PCR tests, which are valid longer than antigen tests. Yes, I mean that the guest needs to be tested in order to be able to enter Austria. And then there are different offers depending on the provinces, on the federal provinces, so guests can use the same facilities for testing as Austrian citizens. So this is a gift to our foreign guests, and then there are also additional private initiatives, and maybe sometimes they are not free for charge, but in general, there are lots of opportunities. And together with the tourist information, uh, tourist associations and the businesses, we have created all these opportunities. So there is a lot of engagement of everybody. And now, Stefan Herring Hagenberg, how are you preparing for the coming years, for the coming weeks? at Schönbruch Zoon. Of course, the zoo uh, has this uh, great advantage that most of the attractions are outdoors and the 20 square meter regulation was a limitation for us and still is. But we had a safety concept already before the pandemic because safety and security concepts are very important for zoos in general. Uh, usually, uh, we need to protect our visitors from diseases of animal diseases and infections, but for COVID-19, uh, we know that also animals can get infected, and we have there for a concept for visitors and also for our employees and co-workers. Now, uh, we recommend to wear masks at the zoo and uh, to adhere to social distancing. And of course, when our small ice bear is playing in the water, people usually forget about distancing. They want to see more. And uh, therefore, we will remind our visitors on a regular basis of all those regulations. And uh, also with uh, the Austrian sites and other zoos, there is a, an active interaction while we are trying uh, to implement our procedures um, and of course we are trying uh, to harmonize those procedures and therefore uh, the regular exchange also with Austrian leading sites and with other zoos is so important in order to exchange experience and to know that it is necessary to act together. So we recommend masks outdoors. At the zoo, indoors masks are obligatory, and we also ask to keep to social distancing. And after 1.5 years, this is actually working. Well, with our visitors, we have seen this, and of course, also the responsibility of visitors is an important factor here. And we will make sure that our animals 
can be seen mainly outdoors. Thank you. Now I would like uh, to move on to Norbert Karlsberg. Also, the winter was characterized by extensive safety concepts that were managed very well. And uh, skiers uh, acted very responsibly. In what way can you benefit from this experience in the coming months? Or uh, what innovations did you have to implement and what challenges are you facing right now? Well, we have gathered a lot of experience. In fall, we were already open for skiing tourists and uh, at the glacier we offered also skiing during winter and in spring and we have learned a lot uh, during the past few months. We have implemented many innovations and the learning process has been sustainable. It's, um, it's very important to comply with regulations, with uh, the protective measures, and I can say that there was no problem here. All visitors comply with the regulations also, also when you need to wait for the cable cars inside of the cabins of the cable cars only 50 percent of the possible seats can be occupied and this relaxes the situation and uh, there are there are just uh, fewer people in the mountains, in free nature, and I can say that our guests are longing for freedom, for individual uh, pasture, and for individually spending time in a sustainable way. And these are topics that are very important and sought after right now, and we are trying uh, to take into account all these new tendencies and expectations. So far, we have managed the crisis very well, and we go into this summer season with a great deal of optimism. We have had to uh, implement limitations, but now we can also hope for an easing of the measures. We are under permanent surveillance of the health authorities, and we are very optimistic that the situation will just be getting better and better. Now, two days before the reopening, have you finished all your preparations till Wednesday already? Well, we have, we, uh, have been preparing for many days already, and our employees are being trained right now. Testing is important, but also the rate of vac the high rate of vaccination among employees is very important, especially among those who are in direct contact and in direct touch with our visitors. So we are trying to provide all of our employees with a vaccination because this is going to be the lifesaver of tourism. A very exciting thought. So you are preparing, you are testing, you are vaccinating. Karin Seiler. You in Innsbruck probably are also getting a lot of questions, numerous questions from your guests. What is your impression? What questions are our guests most concerned about? Well, it depends uh, on the phases, the booking phases, 
So whenever a person books a vacation, they ask what the measures are, what the requirements are. Then when they decided for a certain country, they are interested in um, can cancellation policies. Uh, mostly, we have always offered very uh, flexible cancellation policies. The past summer went really well. There were 48 hours of cancellations. But uh, this is uh, difficult because many book their vacation and they then they cancel just uh, 48 hours before the start of a vacation. Then testing, it's important that tests are free of charge and, charge and that there are possibilities to do a test by yourself and we have lots of test stations in the region so we can offer testing opportunities on a regular basis to all of our tests so if there is a if there is a positive test result we have uh, this uh, so called what is called safe house concept uh, we hope of course that we won't ever need it but if uh, a guest tests positive Positively, we will have an opportunity to isolate this person. Sophie Kamasin, this topic of cancellation policy, then uh, how one can get to a destination, the reachability of the, uh, the destination. These are among the top two. Yes, this is true. Yes, on the one hand, can cancellation policies are among the top three and the top three uh, decision principles for a certain accommodation when the price is right and the performance is right and uh, how one can reach a destination and third third uh, position is already the cancellation policy because it uh, provides the security if the situation will worsen again that there is an opportunity to cancel or to postpone the vacation. This topic of safety and security is, some, is a topic that's among the top four topics of the evaluation of an accommodation. So the guests look on the safety regulations, how these are communicated, whether they are complied with, because people, of course, do not want to get infected during their vacation. So it's at the top of mind, and more than 70% of the respondents uh, consider the uh, security regulations as essential. 70% have the opinion that Austrian tourism can realize these safety concepts. This is acknowledged. So people see that our concepts are applied and they will really protect us. Um, and in this season, this is a very, very important criteria, not only for the accommodation, but also for the country of Austria. The guest must know Corona is taken seriously, safety measures are applied, and you can rely on that. And uh, the survey also has shown there are three uh, items which are important uh, as far as safety is concerned or which are the most convincing one in order to decide to go to Austria. First is the uh, test without charges on the site. So if you want, you can test yourself every day without any expenditures, without any effort. Then the green passport. 
This is, plays a very important role, and let's hope that it will be a digital passport. And the third item is the vaccination of the employees in tourism. So these are the three main topics which are considered to be the most convincing ones. And this must be seen as a chance, because when you see a lot is happening, a lot is <clears throat> realized correctly, this is, of course, an advantage in international competition. We have to see it like that. So a high, a high uh, confidence into the host. Markus Bursche, uh, co- uh, Mrs. Seiler and Mrs. Karmasin uh, told already, talked already about the uh, green certificate. Uh, Austria was quite pushy in this respect. Can you describe a little bit how is the realization, how does the concept look like? And how can the guest integrate this concept? Well, true, we were pushy because, as you have mentioned already, this is a kind of very important element. What is a green certificate? What is a green passport? This sounds a little bit abstract. Some might think this is a digital solution or it's a real passport. No, but there will be three phases. The next phase starts on Wednesday. Wednesday, uh, all valid, uh, all valid proofs, a vaccination proof or a recovery proof or a test proof will be an entrance certificate. So this is the first phase. The second phase is in Austria. We have tried also to be a pioneer in digitization, and we have to say quite openly, well, we have data protection, and we have to do a lot as far as data protection is concerned. And at the beginning of June, we will succeed to offer a digital solution, but we should not neglect that an analog solution is also very important, because not everybody likes digitization. So this second block will start at the beginning of June, and then the biggest barrier is the European passport. Well, Europe, I think, should uh, have positive news because at the beginning of summer, we hope we will have a uniform solution. Maybe we have to mention also this green passport is only a proof for your status. When you are vaccinated 22 days later after the first uh, vaccination and uh, you are considered to be safe for three months, after the second shot, uh, again, six more months. But it does not mean that uh, uh, this is including regional uh, rules. The guest has to find out if there will be a quarantine uh, rule, uh, which tests are necessary to enter or to leave a country. It just shows that you are vaccinated, tested, or (coughs) recovered. And then you have to respect the appropriate rules in the different countries. So at the end of June, we should have a European solution. And this would be, of course, a great success. The federal government is very interested in that. This is a European project, and and we hope that this can be realized. But we were also in a pilot phase, especially as far as the technical circumstances are concerned. And we started with the subject quite early, uniform European solution. Uh, I think uh, 80% of the guests in the Tyrol are international guests. So that means the European solution is very important also for the Tyrol. Yes, yes, of course. It is for us very important, especially (coughs) bilateral, because we have 90% international guests, especially from Germany, but among them, uh, 98 are European guests. Uh, Well, it's not like Switzerland, where you have a lot of intercontinental guests. So United States or China were never among the uh, top guests or the guests with high numbers in the Tyrol. Well, at the beginning of the summer season, we hope there will be a European solution. 
Well, well, it's in a it's an advantage for the Tyrol because now we are discussing safety and prevention concepts, and we had to learn this new concept. Last summer, we have seen already we had prevention concepts, and the guests really uh, sticked to these concepts. Not so much uh, the Austrians. Maybe this can be also confirmed. When there was a problem, it was a problem with the Austrians and not with the foreign guests. But quite often we got this feedback. So this is for us very important. And the development of last weeks, well, this, uh, of course, improving of the mood went uh, was quicker than we expected three or four we weeks ago. I would not have thought that this will be a good summer. Now we have a few signals that it can be a very good summer. We hope so, because we do not know for sure, but it's going now in the right direction, and a lot of European markets will participate in this summer. Karin Seiler, well, uh, the uh, demand, what about the destination Innsbruck? What about the demand for this destination? We have heard that People book a lot, but they want to cancel it on short-term notice. Until last week, we did not have so many bookings because we did not yet know the quarantine rules. Now the role, the title became more interesting. And I see it in my region, 70% of the overnight stays are around Innsbruck and 30% are in hotels. And there is a big difference. Well, we have hotels which are completely booked already because uh, they uh, have postponed their guests from Switzerland or Germany. They had had bookings already for April and May. So there are hotels who are offer a lot pools, mountains, where the guests know I, I have a lot of space for myself. Hotels in the city, of course, we live in a very short-term booking time. Books, bookings are on a very short-term uh, base. Uh, it depends on the weather. Well, the Germans say, will they go to Italy if the weather is bad? Will they stay in the Tyrol? But this is not something specific for COVID. In the cities, we also had very a lot of short-term bookings, so it's difficult to give any forecast. This is also something which we saw in the survey now uh, hotels in the country are booked better than hotels in the city. The hotels in the city have to be more patient. Now I would like to uh, present a few questions. There was a question of Hans Embacher to Markus Burscher. Every host, every small hotel must be tested once per week. Is this a PCR test? And guests from Germany can use the test uh, without charges in Austria. The first question is yes. Um, according to the rules, every employee, every host has to be tested once a week or wear a FFP2 mask. This can be an antigen test or a PCR test. And the second question, I, I would say yes. There is, when we have public testing in Austria, also German tourists can be tested. Before we go to the next question, I would would uh, continue with this international perspective because it's important for a country like Austria. Um, so Stefan Hering Hagenbeck, without that uniform procedure uh, in Europe, it will be difficult for a city of Vienna because you have a lot of international guests. Yes, of course, sure especially for the top sites which are visited 
by international or European tourists, and in that respect, the uniform procedure would be very desirable, and I hope very much that we will have this uniform directive of the European Union. It is very important that we show also to our international guests who want to see uh, Viennese sites and also among them also the zoo of Schönbrunn. In Schönbrunn, we have 40 percent guests, international tourists before COVID. And of course, we would like to welcome them as soon as possible. Mr. Carlsberg, what about you? It's the same direction. Yeah, it's similar like in Schönbrunn. The Kitzsteinhorn is visited by a lot of international tourists. We have only 10 percent Austrian guests. We have a lot of guests outside the European Union, and here we do not expect too much. We do not expect them to come. <clears throat> but during the last weeks, we had this experience. This might, uh, the situation might change very quickly. That there might be international flights. As far as our employees are concerned, of course, it is important which vaccination certificates can be accepted. Well, but I'm quite confident that during the first days of learning, uh, we will know more. Well, if somebody maybe uh, passports or certificates, vaccination certificates look differently in, from another country than in Austria. What we learned in the pandemic, it's important to adapt very quickly. And we try to tell our employees we will learn every day. It would be, of course, fine if there is one uniform electronic certificate which is valid all over Europe. But there will be also people or tourists outside the European Union, and they probably have different certificates. So I think we have to learn, and it's important to have easy and simple standards which can be used also when controlling guests. Simple controlling because you do not want to discuss with guests in different languages uh, at the entrance of a restaurant. So simple standards, if possible, on an international level. We hope that this will be realized during the next weeks and months. Well, I can only emphasize this. And this is, of course, is a great challenge because you need every day the informations which are important for your guests. The next question is uh, concerning already winter. Mrs. Rosenberg from Hungary asked if we will have Christmas markets under which conditions. This is a very difficult question, of course. Well, I think it's not quite serious to answer this question now. We do not know. We have to cope now with summer, and then we can continue. For, there's a question from Romania. Is there a mask obligation uh, outdoor when walking in parks? No, in principle, no. But when you have a lot of people, there is the recommendation of the zoo in Schönbrunn, very good. So if it makes sense to wear masks, then you should wear masks, and then you should do it. But this is also an important subject. Genau. Sophie Karmasin, a question. If a guest is not used to regular testing, the um, test obligation in Austria could be irritating. Well, it's not an obligation. It is rather an offer, which is free of charge and very easy to use. But if you don't want to use it, you don't have to. But if there are many guests in a region where most of the people get tested, and also Austrians get tested, and for, for Austrians, it's become just normal. And of course, I think it can become normal also for 
for foreign guests. I think this shouldn't be this shouldn't be a burden, and it's not an obligation. It's an offer, and that's the difference. Stefan Herring Hagenbeck, where should be the focus? Many sites are also linked to conventions, a sphere that is going to change significantly. So this is about a, a Congress and convention tourism. What do you think? What will be the future here? I think that Congress's conventions and trade fairs are very important for us, and there are lots of synergies also between those and sites. I am a biologist by profession, and we are social beings. Of course, many things are going to change, but many things will also stay the same. And we, as zoos live from that and also as sites we live from the life experience and the life experience cannot be compared with other things and I think that uh, that uh, travel behavior is going to change that is for sure but I also have a lot of optimism as far as the future is concerned. I think the life experience cannot be replaced by anything. And we are adapting in order to provide safety to make this possible, to make life experiences possible in the future. And a short trip or a one-day tour uh, by using a plane, this might be something that won't be used so much, but uh, my business is to present animals' life, and I'm sure we will return back to this. And we have seen this also during the crisis. People want this and we need to adapt our concepts accordingly. Adaptation of concepts, uh, Robert Siller, uh, we talked about sustainability already. Do we also need to offer new vacation products or packages, or are we um, on track anyway? Well, not everything is good and not everything is at its best, of course. That would be that would be too simple. A pandemic is a test of resilience, a stress test, but it opens up new opportunities. Doc, Dr. Karmasin uh, talked of many things that will remain. On the one hand, it's uh, management of the pandemic, pandemic, but then there will be this hedonistic element again. We want to have good food, we want to celebrate together. But of course, this is also a big opportunity, and we should take the opportunity. And it's not only about digitization. We have become smarter recently as far as uh, tourism is concerned. Tourism has always been uh, in midst of uh, recent developments and tendencies. We, are, we keep informed, we keep up to date. We use the tools which are in place already. And if Austria does not use the opportunity uh, in view of sustainability, regional, regional regions, Austria, Switzerland, then nobody can help us. It is help us if we are not able to make use of those new trends. Yes, I think those two trends, sustainability and regions, this is something that so much fits Austria, but not everything has been done so far. So there can be, there's so much work still to be done. 
One can travel to Austria maybe without a car, uh, but also without a plane. So there, there might be public transportation. What will be the situation of uh, electromobility? Is there an infrastructure for that? What about renewable energy? What about separation of wastes? What about waste or food waste? So there is limitless space for new developments and for using such aspects in brandings. This is possible. And also in the regions, of course, there are so many great concepts of what is going on in the regions, in businesses, as far as the culinary, culinary world is uh, concerned or advice in the regions. This is not something that is finished one day and then it's running for the next 10 years. It's something that needs to be renewed and updated regularly and permanently and consistently. And I think there are lots of chances and opportunities. These are quoted all the time. But yes, the crisis opens up new opportunities for the tourism sector. Yes, this is correct. So if talking of sustainability again, this is about a responsible form of tourism. We don't want to live off a region, but with a region. Is this a vision for us? Is it more than a vision? Yes, we want to move into this direction. We have all learned that uh, Austria does not always have to look at the figures. Quality is more important than quantity, but it's easily said, but not so easily implemented. When we talk of sustainability, we often mean ecology and the social element, but this people, profit, planet, those concepts need to be linked and we need to take initiatives here. What was said by Dr. Kamersin is interesting. Why don't we have just a 100% regenerative mobility in some regions? This is possible. It's something we can do. 86% of guests still arrive in Tyrol with a car, for example. So the ecological footprint is something here. Of course, people need to come to Tyrol in a certain way. They can't beam themselves yet. But we think we need to include the guests into those processes of greening the sector. And the guests also need to pay for this. So we started off with the topic of safety, ended up with the topic of sustainability. Well, sustainability is, is a topic that will stay. And of course, safety is something that is uh, very central during this uh, summer. I mean, but this is nothing that makes people enthusiastic. It's something we need to do due to the situation we are in right now. But sustainability is something very forward-looking that will actually that will actually interest many of our guests. But hygiene and uh, health uh, protection is not anything that will interest many. One question to Markus Burscher. When uh, Austrian people will test more, and then when we will have also guests that will be will uh, need to get tested, is there sufficient infrastructure for this? Yes, I think so. 
The variety of tests uh, is uh, rather wide. Uh, it's easily to access a test. You can do a test even at home in your living room. And one factor is that also the vaccinations are uh, growing. The vaccination rate is going up uh, 40 percent of the people already received the vaccination, so we are prepared in theory and with the reopening steps, of course, there might be a certain um, a certain uh, bottleneck, but we are well prepared. And from this safety crisis, we need to bridge over to, we need to bridge over to sustainability. So there are lots of uh, issues here because just being alone in a car which will provide safety is not sustainable at all. Yes, you are right. Priorities from the past year. Are there things that have changed uh, during the, uh, since the past year? Well, the situation has changed. Something has happened. We have not uh, actually expected. So if, some, if somebody had told us what could happen, uh, then nobody would have uh, believed uh, this person, and then nobody would uh, had, a, had allowed to have his or her freedom so restricted as they were. And now, of course, we need to adapt again. We need to, uh, to curb on individual mobility or those uh, travels per plane and everything. But certain things will return again. And I think that we will very quickly again feel the, this longing for certain things. And we, because if we lose uh, certain safety requirements, no, nobody will be sad about it, but, pe but people will again have what they usually want to have during their vacation. So a question to everybody, what will the future guests be looking for? What are the expect expectations of the visitor of the future? Analog experience at the zoo, for example? Yes, I think safety is going to play an important role in the individuality. The individual product and package will be important, and also the linkage and the connections between destinations and digital in order to, sh to make the offers more Indi individualized. Yes, these will be the big challenges, but these are challenges we are working at all the time. Mr. Siller, uh, resonance, is it, that, is it this? Yes, I think, and this is something that is very important in happiness research. So these are moments, certain moments that make us happy. It's not a long period of time. So it's not the entire vacation that makes us happy, but it's certain moments. And it might be very often small things. Small things can also irritate us a lot. For example, if something doesn't work with the check-in or when this uh, human component is missing, then I think uh, this uh, is so important 
Uh, and those small things can also evoke moments of happiness, which are very, very important. If uh, there are just a poses uh, and posters fewer coming to Austria, we are not going to lose a lot. Sophie Kamasin, the future of the guest or the future guest, I think there will be these three items, sustainability, regionality, and digitization. And this could mean a lot, especially as far as digitization is concerned. Uh, of course, this is influencing safety subjects. Well, before you book a weekend holiday, you will have a look how many people are there already. Ready. Is this okay if I go there? Or do I have to queue for a very long t time? So digital solutions will influence tourism more than before. And also analog versus digital is a big chance for tourism and the Congress tourism, I would even say, because when sustainability is important, we do not have to travel to Paris for three hours of shopping. Then maybe we think about three days in Paris or three days in Vienna, and that means two overnight stays. So a Sustainable tourism is a slow tourism, which does not use the plane so often, and which is act more more active, and uh, that also has means something for mobility. So when we have sustainable tourism, because due to digital solutions with longer stays, so this is an advantage for the tourism, and uh, additional to digitization, Congress tourism could also have an advantage because I think there are many will want to have this analog uh, experience. They want to do socializing. They want to get to know each other because it's not difficult differently. But additionally, you can join a Congress in it on a digital level. And this opens a bigger target group. This also has advantages. I think I think we have to get used very quickly to the new uh, requirements and challenges. But I think Austria is quite in a good position. Well, we have to define future and guest because the next future cannot be compared with the future in three or four years. What does it mean you have to define a guest? Well, we had now two years where a whole generation starts a new kind of tourism and traveling. I do not want to do a forecast. I'm not so sure if taking a plane is really something of the past time, but we will think about it, yes. But uh, we can create the future because we can show our strength in Austria with our offer. And so it's up to us, because when we offer something to the international guest, we can create this uh, offer. And uh, we can create well-being, and we can create spare time, which is one of the best, of the best values we have. Thanks a lot. And now I would like to conclude this round. I hope it was a very interesting round for you. Mm -hmm. Karin Seiler. So digital does not work so well. You see this. It's well. Uh, so you cannot be, you are not so well remarked when you are uh, just joining digitally. Well, uh, I do not want to generalize. Uh, well, how sustainable is event tourism? How sustainable are tourists from abroad when they see Europe in 10 days? I do not want to discuss that. But I want to say that city hotels are based on these guests. So the capacity of the beds and the products are depending on these guests. And it will be very difficult for us 
to be very sustainable because we have a lot of guests who come from far away and this is not sustainable. And when I say, oh, we separate our waste very prof uh, professionally, but this cannot compensate the long traveling distance and Congress, yes, uh, all uh, cities are, of course, uh, developing new concepts with the Congress houses, but this will be only, only a small part because Congress is living depending on industry. Uh, industry is financing Congresses because they want to present their products, and this is not so we're not so easy in a digital on a digital level. So cities want to welcome guests for a longer time, of course, and you have to become attractive so that tourists do not stay one or two nights, but three nights. Uh, here you have to show a lot of incentives. You have to show a lot of products, and how can we uh, just? create magic moments. The city product you know is, is St. Stephen's or uh, the Sioux in Schönbrunn. How can I create additional magic moments in a city trip? Safety, a few words as far as safety is concerned. As it has been said already, safety is very important, but sooner or later it will be a standard product as today. Of course, I can use public transport as a guest. This is already standard, and this the same will happen with safety. Thanks, Karin Seiler, Herr Karlsberg. Well, in Kaprun, we have more than 100 years tourism, and last but not least, it was always the great nature which uh, was important and also people living in that landscape. And in the future, this will become more and more important. Uh, man and nature, where the, uh, where the uh, inhabitant feels well, also the guest feels well. And this was a main principle also in difficult times in our region. This helped us to overcome difficult times. And that's why it was important for us uh, to, uh, to be selected in Tel Amse and Kaprun as a model region, an energy region in Austria. This decision was made during the COVID time. It will concern us during the next uh, years. Here, we do not only talk about the impression we make on our guests. It's, we talk also about the internal effects. Uh, we have and the economic base. And so the, these uh, roots or these uh, dimensions have been strengthened during COVID time because if you do not know your roots, then it will be difficult for you in the future. Of course, we have adapted our offers and we found out and uh, we have considered this already uh, in our office that individual products, for example, uh, well, just that you have to uh, register online when you want to see a national park. And uh, but of course, it is important then to experience these excursions and these individual offers we want to strengthen. And this is the force or the strengths which we can take with the pandemic. I'm sure that we will start a good time now. The last months have shown how quickly things change for the better. Safety has become a standard product, and our guests must rely on this. They can rely on that. But now the next question is uh, to show a new hospitality and to live it because uh, for years and years this hospitality has made us successful. So maybe a little bit slower, a little more, a little bit more silent. This will be the new slogan. 
Thanks a lot. And now I would like to uh, conclude this panel. Thank you for everybody who was here at the Messevin. Thanks, Mr. Karlsberg, Karin Seiler. And now I give the word to Ina Sabica. And I thank you and I wish all the best to Austria here, not for the next months, but for the next years. Thanks a lot. Thanks to all our specialist representatives of their fields who have just uh, underlined that Austria is uh, a good, responsible host and that we are ready for this new restart, for this comeback of tourism for the summer 2021. Guests from a abroad and from Austria, you can be confident, you can be sure that uh, holidays in Austria are full of magic moments. So, well, we are looking forward to this tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, we will have another discussion round. We will talk about mobility and, of course, we will also have an insight into restaurants and hotels. When you are on the platform now, if you do not want to miss anything, then you have a button live, and here you get also uh, information what is now discussed live and online. But of course, you can always see the program on demand means afterwards. And another information, I think it's great because when you want to get new ideas, and this is the main item of the Austrian tourism days, then we also have a photo box on our platform and you can see everything. Uh, and you can see all the Austrian highlights. You can take picture pictures and you can also take from with us a small snapshot. So the next program will start with inspiration. We want to show you the most beautiful places Austria has to offer. If you want, uh, join us in about 10 minutes.